hey, what's up? So I debated whether to do this or not, but I think, you know, I've been out of the business for four years now. I don't think it really matters. Um, so it'll be a fun thing. And uh, I think that a lot of you will find this stupid and entertaining. And, oh, let me put my disclaimer first. Let me just say this emphatically, straight up. I realize that what I did was stupid. During me doing it, I then realized what I was doing was not good. But I was sort of already committed to the process. Once you're there, it's hard to just get out. So um, it is what it is. I made a mistake. And... Um, I guess it doesn't really matter now, right? So this is how I got kicked out of Monday Night Raw backstage. Now, uh, I would not suggest any independent pro wrestler that's trying to get noticed by WWE do this. Don't do this. Bad idea. It won't work. Trust me, I know. It'll be fun and it'll be an adventure, but... You're not going to get hired this way. Maybe in 1995, but not these days. You can't do this, okay? So it was about 2015. I was um, going to a show um, in Dallas, Texas. Um, I was not booked on the show at that time, but I was going for a clinic. If you don't know what a clinic is, um, a clinic is a seminar conducted by a either a very experienced wrestler or a lot of times a star uh, will come do one. I know there's been several by Gold Dust and a few of the other guys uh, of that level, even, where they have 25, 30 maybe wrestlers from that area around the ring. Some of it's talking about the business and just the psychology of a match and, and then the rest of it is in the ring and it may be about three hours worth of time maybe cost 30 40 bucks per person the guy may you know the, the name makes some money the guys get some experience working with somebody who was on tv so everybody wins everybody's happy so it's a good time so this uh clinic was conducted by billy gunn badass billy gunn uh and so i was like you know what i'm gonna go I had no idea what I was walking into, but so I went there and there was about 35 of us in the clinic, which is a lot. And it turned out that I just happened to be the most experienced person at, at, on the apron. And that's sort of like being the best marcher the first day of basic training. It's not always a good thing. So over the course of about an hour and a half to two hours in the ring, I was the punching bag. I basically um, had about 35, 40 minutes of solid in-ring time with Billy. That was cool. He is a big son of a bitch, by the way. I was trying to put him in a full, I'm 5'10", about 200 pounds. So I'm not really a big person anyways, but I was trying to put him in a full Nelson and my, <laughs> my fingers weren't touching. And he was like, clasp your fingers. I'm like, you don't understand. You're a big son of a bitch. I can't get my hands to, to, to even, they were like this far. Like that's how big he, I couldn't get around. So he was going to pick a tag match out of the clinic to work a show, uh, work on the show that night. And uh, you know, I was a part of the tag match. It was a good tag match. I don't really recall the other people in the match. Um, I think they were like local guys that I really didn't know all that well. It was a good show. I think uh, Billy worked Keith Lee uh, in the main event. That was before Keith Lee got signed. So he was a independent wrestler then. Um, so after the show and after the clinic and all this stuff, I was talking to Billy and I just asked him, like, you know, I've been trying to get noticed by 
the extra talent people in WWE who is a, uh, one of the referees. His name is John Cohn. He controls all the extra talent. So I, I've been, I had been writing emails back and forth with John Cohn for like, my God, like two, three years. And all I wanted was to come up there and, you know, introduce myself, introduce my gimmick, show them what I had, show them, you know, my, my, my skill set, I guess you could say, um, and see if I could get myself a job, you know, um, I'd be, would have been willing to relocate or do whatever it needed to be done to make this happen. So I was all on board 100% with it. And so I asked them, you know, what should I do? Because it's like every time they come, it sounds good in the email. He's telling me all the right stuff. Hey, you know, we'll send you this and we'll, we'll, we'll contact you and we're coming in, you know, and I would message John about like nine months say, Hey, my city is going to have raw. Can I be a part of it? And he would very positive. Everything was cool. He never said, you know, a flat out no, but then they would just never send me the information or never contact me. And, um, so I was trying to figure out a, a way to get noticed by them and, and to get in front of their face. And Billy Gunn, I seriously doubt he'll ever watch this, but Billy Gunn gave, gave me some really fucked up advice. And I took it. I'm not sure if he thought that I would actually take it, but I did. So he said, well, do you want a job? Yes. How bad? Pretty damn bad. He was like, put on a suit get your gear bag and go up there and ask for a job. But they didn't call me. No, 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 Go, just go. That'll show initiative. You have huge balls if you do that. You want to separate yourself from everyone else? You want to stand out? Go up there unannounced. In hindsight, probably not the best idea. However, I decided to do it. And that is exactly what I did, folks. I put on a suit. I got my gear and my roll bag. And I went up to the stadium. And I didn't know where to go because I didn't get the extra talent information. And I have instructions on what to bring and where to go, where to park, what side to come in on. I didn't know that. So I just went to the front door of the stadium and there was a security woman out there she was a a little old lady sweet nice lady and i just told her i said hey i'm here for the the wrestling event local wrestler and i'd like to go backstage no lies i told her straight up and she delivered me right to wwe she delivered me right to, we walked around this corner and then all of a sudden I see just the, the everyone you think you would see. Now, uh, I saw right in front of me, I saw um, Road Dog, and he was with someone who I knew. He was with Adam Pierce, and I was in the NWA with Adam Pierce like a hundred years ago. So I've known Adam for a long, long time. He's not my BFF or anything, but you know, were acquaintances. So Road Dog walked, was walking with him. They were in the suits, you know, because they're the agents in control of the, the backstage and the part of the car. So they were in suits walking around. And as soon as Adam saw me, he goes, Oh, holy cow, what's up? Gave me a hug. What's up? How you doing? Right in front of Road Dog. And he was like, What are you what are you doing? I was like, Well, I'm here for the extra talent. I, I I'm here to try to get a job. And he was like, badass. And then he looked at uh, Tony Chimmel, the announcer, and he was like, hey, could you direct him to the extra talent room? And I was like, I'm in. Let's do this. So I walked with Tony, and he took me to the extra talent room, and, and it was about an hour before anybody else showed up. So I was in that room by myself. And during that hour of self-reflection, I then realized that perhaps I had made a, an error in judgment and I started to panic a little bit because I didn't know 
I didn't think I was going to get as far as I had gotten already. So at this point, I was at my plan had ended already. I was I didn't really have a plan for like actually being there for like any length of time. Because I knew eventually the other extra talent was going to show up, the real extra talent, and and they might not like the idea that I just walked in, right? And then I, I didn't know if WWE would like like lose their mind on me or yell at me or have me arrested or whatever. I wasn't sure. So I started to really get nervous. <laughs> and so then the extra, you know, I was walking around, um, and you know i mean i saw people i saw i walked by catering i saw what they all you know i, I saw gold dust in there i saw um devon dudley who was i guess one of the agents he was over on the side but i didn't talk to nobody i i kept to myself and i just shut up because i was trying to figure out what i should do so then uh out of nowhere i'm walking back to the room and i see a group of people walking from the parking lot and it's the actual extra talent folks and um i know several of them and one in particular which i will not say his name because this is the moment when he when we stopped being cool i guess i understand um you know i guess i shouldn't have said anything to him but i did so i actually you know had just worked a show with him recently um and so i pulled him over to the side and i said hey i did something and i need some advice first of all he was super shocked to see me he was like what the f what the hell so i pulled him over to the side and i was like hey look i did something like I just told him, I said, nobody called me to be here today. I just came. And his eyes went from what the fuck? And he just backed up a little bit and he was like, you need to tell somebody before, don't let them find out. You need to go and tell somebody and, and see what happens. I was like, okay, well, I figured it was a good idea to tell somebody who I thought might understand. So since how Billy Gunn is the one that told me, I thought that there was no better person for me to go find than Road Dog. Seems logical. So So I was walking uh, down the hall and I saw Road Dog walking and I walked right next to him. I said, excuse me, hi, uh, do you have a second? Can I walk with you and talk while we walk? And he said, sure, what's up? I said, I did something really stupid and I'm sort of regretting it right now and I'm not sure what to do. Uh, I, I did something pretty dumb and uh, I wanted to tell you and don't hit me. <laughs> and he just stopped walking when I said, don't hit me. And he was like, cause he don't know who I am. He was like, what did you do? I was like, nobody called me for extra talent. I'm a local indie wrestler. I was trained by tugboat and I want a job. And he went, Oh, Dude, this is in 1995. Hold on, come here. And he took me to catering and he was like, you stand right here. You don't say nothing to nobody. I'm gonna go figure out what to do with you. Hold on. So we went to catering. I don't know what happened, but out of nowhere, John Cohn is standing right in front of me with uh, another referee uh, called Derek Moore, a uh, black guy. And I can tell Derek is ready to punch me in the face. I can tell John is just confused. Like, they were like, who are you? Who are you? Where Where are you supposed to be? What's going on here? Who are you? You know, because I'm just like standing in the middle of like catering, right? And I'm like, oh God, okay. So when I said my, my working name to John Cone, 
his light bulb went off and he realized who I was. And he was like, you can't do this. We have like protocols and stuff. You can't just show up. I'm like, yeah, but I had nothing to lose really. I mean, honestly, you weren't calling me anyways. So I just wanted to stand in front of you and say like, I want a job, like give me a chance. And I could tell every time I said anything, that guy, Derek Moore was getting more mad and more mad. And then, um, uh, the VP at the time of talent relations, Mark Carano walked right into like the whole group of us talking. And he was like, what is this? What's going on? Who are you? And I was just like, oh God. I mean, at least it's not Vince, right? So then I tell him what happened and he was like, look, the Jew, the Jew, the Jew guy, I'm like, you know who the hell I am? Holy cow. And he was like, look, we'll, we'll book you. We'll, we'll use you. But you can't do it like this. Um, we have like, you know, things. We have a whole list of items for you to bring. We have a whole protocol and a whole thing for you to fill out and all this stuff for you to do that you, ain't, you haven't done because you just showed up. So you can't do this. He's like, but I want to tell you you have huge balls, and if this was like 1995, you would have gotten yourself a job by doing this. But it just doesn't work this way anymore. Who told you? They set me up too. He's like, who told you to come do this? And I was like, Billy Gunn? And he was like, Billy Gunn doesn't fucking work here. So then Road Dog came back from talking to I have no idea who and he was like yeah I'm sorry man you gotta go and so they escorted me out and uh well Derek um Moore escorted me out man I got a lot of heat for doing that um a few select people who I won't name you know contacted me to tell me how aggravated they were with what I did this fat ass piece of garbage named Rudy Boy Gonzalez called me on the phone and uh, threatened to slap me and beat me up. And of course, the next time he saw me in person, he went, he was like mute. He, did, he didn't say nothing. Um, but, you know, most people though, most people thought that uh, although it was very stupid to do, they applauded my effort. <laughs> but in the end, you know, I mean, I didn't get a job in WWE like I wanted, but that's okay. I had a good career anyways, and um, hey, life is good now. Life has actually never been better, so I can't complain about anything. If you like this content, let me know. There's plenty of other stories I could tell from my um, time spent as an indie pro wrestler. Well, I really appreciate you watch it all the way to the end. If you would be so kind as to like and subscribe, you know how much that helps me out. I really appreciate it. And share this video with your friends. Maybe they want to laugh at me too. It is what it is. It was fun while I was there. It was cool. Bray Wyatt walked right past me and gave me a fist bump. And you know what? It was noon. Noon. And he was in full gimmick. He gave me a fist bump, but that dude was like, creep holding the lantern walking slow on my way out sasha banks looked right at me she was like what did you do i was like i just showed up for a job interview to try to get a job interview unannounced and she went oh well it is what it is thanks for watching